Well, sure there is. All we have to do is think of it. You asked me, I had the primo solution the other day. Oh, yeah, the shock therapy? Gina, you let me give him one or two more jolts of electricity. He'd be telling us things we don't even want to know. I don't think a couple of extra jolts are going to help Sonny. I think his brain scrambled enough as it is. Hey, don't kid yourself. He's no dummy. Oh, no, he's just smart enough to know what we want. Which is why we're going to have to find some other way of weaseling this out of him. Excuse me? It's okay. Let me ask you something. When is it that Sonny lets down his defenses? I mean, when is he at his most vulnerable? Well, I, I guess when he's asleep. Next to that. When he's drunk or when he's horny. Bada ba bing. We gotta get him going both ways. I can only handle so much. Don't worry about it. I'll take care of getting him drunk. The rest is up to you, though. I certainly hope so. How did you find out? The local paper called me this morning. They wanted to run an item about the baptism in the society pages. All I could do is about it is hem and haw. I mean, how could I tell them that the father or the grandfather weren't invited to the occasion? The hell is Julia thinking about? Well, all things considered, Dad, it's uh, probably all for the better. The way things are between Julia and me, it'd probably be a scene at the baptismal font. We'd end up having a water fight or something. Mason. I don't care what's happening between the two of you. You can't let that stand in the way of going to your own daughter's baptism. Well, of course not. I mean, you do have a child between you. So one thing you could at least build a foundation on. It's a common ground you have to rebuild on. And you do have to rebuild, Mason. It's vital that you get back in Judy's good graces and get her off our backs about this investigation to our oil rigs. Well, I know that. Well, don't know it. Do something about it. Find out what she has on us, then neutralize it. I'm going to be working on it. Don't worry. Make sure you do. I don't have to tell you what Julia's capable of. Look what she did to Keith Simmons. I don't want the hound at my heels. What's, uh, let's talk about hounds. Oh, uh, nothing, Mason, when I was just talking about hunting, going hunting with the hounds, you know, fox hunting. Yeah, we'll have to find ourselves a fox one of these afternoons and go to it. Yes. Riding to the hounds. What are you two think you're kidding? You'll all be standing out around the baptismal. It's not a very elaborate service. It's just 15 minutes or so. I feel like I'm getting her ready for her wedding already. Well, they're both sacraments. Hmm. So, now I'm going to be... Where do I stand? Right around here? Oh! You all right? Oh, you know, I shouldn't wear heels. Ow. I've fallen off my heels three times already today. Did you hurt yourself? No, it's all right. I... I'm a klutz. If I keep this up, I'm going to be in traction at Christmas. Ugh. How's your ankle feel? Did you sprain it? No, I didn't sprain it. Does it hurt here? How about when you move? <laughs> yes. Oh. How about here? Well, it hurts right there. Ow. Yeah. I'll live, though. <laughs> Who's going to be the first to tell me what you two are talking about. Well, if you must know, Mason and I were discussing how wrong it is for Judy to uh, try to keep us away from Samantha's baptism, that's all. What baptism? When? Where? You haven't heard. No. You see, she's trying to keep it from all of us. It's this evening at Father Michael's chapel. And we better do something about it quickly and do it in concert. You're right. Then yeah, I'll get on it right away. I'll uh, see you both later. Mason, what are you going to do? I'm kind of in a hurry, so here. Mason? Can you imagine trying to cut me out of my granddaughter's life this way? I simply won't allow it. No matter what's happened between Mason and Julia, the child is a capwell. This is Julia's way of getting at us. Very ill-advised of her, don't you think? I don't think she's probably taken the time to think ahead about the consequences of raising a child without father and certainly without the rest of us around. Dolly, why don't you find some excuse to talk to her and try to show her, make her realize how wrong she is? I'll certainly try. It has to be today. The ceremony is this evening. I will. I'll go over and talk to you. You can come with me. I mean, I absolutely agree with you. A child needs a sense of family around her. And she certainly shouldn't be raised without both parents, even though they're not living together. Absolutely. I really wish I could try to convince them both that they can share the love of a child, even though they're not sharing their life together. <laughs> 
I wish you wouldn't sound so much as if you were verbalizing your feelings towards me. Come in. Well, I don't know what you're selling, but come right in. Well, actually, I'm uh, selling myself for a change. Do you really think it's that safe to leave the door unlocked like that? What do you think of this outfit? <laughs> I think it's very striking. Yes, but I mean, does it look sort of godmotherly? Well, no, not at all. I think you look dynamite in it. But then again, I'm, uh, well, I'm really attracted to older women. Older women? What did you think I asked you? Didn't you ask me something about if you looked like a grandmother? I did not. Why would I ask you a question like that? I'm a young woman. I'm not even in the prime of my life yet. I asked you if I look godmotherly. Oops. Oops, indeed. Yeah, well, maybe I'll just go back out and come back in again. Stay I'll... right where you are. You see, I'm going to my niece's baptism today, and I'm sure Julia's going to ask me to be her godmother. So I wanted to make sure I was suitably dressed, and now you tell me I look like a grandmother. No, I didn't say that. I'm, oh, yes, I said that, but it was a misunderstanding. You, you don't look like a grandmother. You look beautiful. Well... Don't try to flatter me now. The damage is done. Oh, come on, huh? Look, don't hang me for this, all right? I didn't come over here to step on your toes. I came over here because I hadn't seen you in a while, and I wanted to find out what was going on. So, uh, forgive me, will you? Is that an order? Yeah, it is. Coax me. Well, um, if your baptism doesn't take too long, what do you say I take you somewhere for cocktails? And that way I can coax you in comfort. Huh? No, I, I don't think so. No, come on. This is a misunderstanding, Augusta. Right? You owe that to me. At least let me make it up to you, all right? Why do I suddenly end up owing you? Because I suddenly feel like the injured party in this thing. Come on, what do you say? <sighs> well, I'm tempted. But, unfortunately, I promised Julia I would babysit for a while while she ran some errands. I see. But, but she'll only be a couple of hours, so maybe we could have that drink a little later, about five o'clock. That sounds great. That's kind of around the cocktail time. <laughs> Where shall we meet? Oh, well, I don't know. How about, uh, how about the uh, corral? You mean that cowboy bar? Yeah. Well, I, I know it. We do that about five o'clock, right? Well, yes, but you don't sort of strike me as the cowboy type. I'm not the cowboy type. I just happen to like the ambiance, you know. It's, it's low light, and it's the kind of place that people that don't want to be seen together can get together and see each other. Are you suggesting that we don't want to be seen together? No, I'm just suggesting that with you in mind, um, so I have that good a reputation in town and all that. Well, actually, that rather appeals to me. I find people with good reputations rather dull. Really? I've been accused of a lot of things, but, um, that's not one of them. No. I'm sure it isn't. Hi. Hi. Come Hi. on in. Thanks. Hi, Scott. Hey. I'm glad you're both here. I would like to ask a favor. Sure, what can sure. we do for you? I'm having Samantha baptized this evening. I know it's short notice, and I, I just decided it today. I was wanting to know if... If you would consider being her godparents. Well, if you're free and, and if you're, you'd be willing. Well, I'm, I'm very flattered. I've, I've never been a godfather before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's real unexpected. Um, if I can ask, why did you choose us? You both took very good care of her when I was in trouble, and you showed her the love and the caring that she needed. That's, that's very sweet of you. Um... You know, you're so close to Cruz Need, and I would really think that, that you choose them. Well, they're already related to her by marriage, and they certainly have a lot to deal with on their own. The other reason is I, I really kind of wanted to keep the Capwells out of this as much as possible. There's a lot of antagonism between Mason and myself and Cece. Listen, and... you don't have to explain yourself. Heather and I would be proud to be Samantha's godparents. Won't we, hon? <laughs> Nah, I got a steady hand. Think this is gonna work? Hey, don't worry about it. A few shots of this, a slap and a tickle from you, and he'll be spilling his guts all over the place. What is this stuff? This is 180 proof. Pure white lightning. 
an offering he can't refuse. Yeah, well, it's not going to help us if Sonny's dead. Yeah. But I gave him some lighter fluid once, and he seemed to survive, but I guess he must be pretty tough. If you think that Sonny's going to get within 100 feet of you after you tried to electrocute him yesterday, you are bugs, buddy. Hey, you let me take care of that. You just slip into your sexiest outfit, stick some perfume behind your knees, and I'll be back in a jiffy with Sonny. You can borrow anything you want from my closet. Oh, I think I can find something of my own that'll be suitable. I bet you can. Gina, this is gonna work fine. We're gonna have Sonny down on all fours before nightfall, you watch. I think it's a very sad commentary on my womanly charms that we have to get him snockered to get him to come back here and be with me. Hey, baby, baby, do not take this personally. This has nothing to do with your charms. I wouldn't need a drop of alcohol to switch places with Sonny. Really? I'd do it in a second. You mean that? Yeah. You surprise me sometimes. Well, I'm a very romantic man. But there's a job to be done here, right? So let's get on it. I gotta go find that guy first, and you? You gotta get in your working clothes. <laughs> You all right? Does it hurt here? How about when you move? <laughs> yes. Hello, Father. All alone, are we? Yes. Why? I just thought I might find Julia here. You two seem to be together so much of the time lately. No, she's not here. Really? Not even hiding behind the altar, huh? Well, that seems odd. You two find so many reasons to be together of late. Now it appears that Samantha's baptism is the latest one. There is nothing wrong with Julia asking me to perform the ceremony, nor with my accepting. I'm glad to hear that. And I'm sure you won't find anything wrong with me attending then, since I am Samantha's father. And since it doesn't matter a hoot in hell what you think. Don't ask me. It's Julia's place to invite you, not mine. Yeah, well, Julia's been a little remiss lately, and I get the feeling you're not just jumping up and down to have me around, so uh, I guess the ball's in my court. But don't worry, I'm not shy. I'm inviting myself. Oh, uh, by the way, in spite of everything that's happened, don't get the idea I'm just going to roll over and play dead and let you walk into Julia's life and take up where I left off. Because that's not going to happen. You make a lot of unwarranted assumptions. <laughs> yeah. Just giving you fair warning. I'll see you at the water fountain tonight, Andre. Hi, sorry it took so long. Oh, it's perfectly all right. Did you get everything? I bought out two stores. <laughs> Can you die from conspicuous consumption? Oh, no, luckily. Uh, look, I have a couple of errands to run before the ceremony, so I I'm just going to go off for a while. I How was my girl? Oh, an angel. She's going to be a perfect godchild. Godchild? Samantha. Well, you are going to ask me to be her godmother, aren't you? Uh. You, you mean you're not? Well, you're already her aunt, for heaven's sakes. I mean, that's why I asked Scott and Heather. Scott and Heather? Two perfect strangers? Hospital personnel? I don't believe this. Why do you want to be a godmother anyway? I mean, I know that you love Samantha. I mean, that isn't the question. It's just having to care for a child and put a cramp in your style. Besides, I like you better when you just breeze in and out of her life full of fun and surprises. Kind of like Auntie Mame. Better than a stodgy godmother. Auntie Mame? Really? Well, that's more a character, don't you think? <sighs> Life's a banquet, and most poor bastards are starving to death. <laughs> yes, I could live with that. Well, all right, let Heather and Scott take care of her spiritual guidance. I'll take care of her secular education. Exactly right. I didn't hurt your feelings, did I? I didn't mean to insult you. Oh, no, I'm not insulted. Well, at least neither of them are Capwells. That's some consolation. <laughs> 
I just wish you didn't share any common blood with them. But that's what I'm going to make Samantha very aware of. Even though she is half genetically a Capwell, the rest of the part, the really important part, is all Wainwright. Yeah, yeah. Well, I guess so. I'll, I'll see you at the ceremony. Of course, what I'll be doing there now is beyond me. I need you for moral support, and don't be late. I really don't see why you were in such a big hurry to take Julia up on her offer. Why not? It was a nice offer. Well, considering the problems that you and I have been having lately, I think it was a little insensitive to my feelings. Honey, look, I... I don't want to make a big thing out of this, okay? But I don't think that I was being insensitive. I think that you're being overly sensitive. It's not like we've committed ourselves to adopting Samantha. Julie was just making a nice gesture of friendship, that's all. And to be honest with you, I think it would have been kind of rude to say no. Scott, we are making a commitment to be responsible for Samantha in case anything happens to Julia. Mm -hmm. I'm not ready to make a commitment like that to a child of my own, much less someone that I hardly know. And also, I don't think I like the idea of her naming both of us as godparents. <laughs> what, you want to leave me out in the cold? No, but don't you think that's kind of assuming something about the permanence of our relationship? Something we haven't even assumed yet. No, I don't. She thinks we're a couple. I think that we're a couple. It was just her way of cementing the friendship, that's all. Of making you and I a permanent part of hers and Sammy's life. Either as two individuals or one couple, whichever way it'll be. Why is that so threatening? I didn't say I felt threatened. I said I felt pushed. Honey, you really have to get over this idea that everything we do relates to the two of us having kids. I know. I know. I guess I just had it on my mind so much lately that I kind of superimpose it on everything. <laughs> well, you got to learn to relax about it. <laughs> I guess I have been a little obsessive lately, huh? Yeah. You know, every time I hear the word parent, I kind of freak out, <laughs> you know. Uh, I'll try to calm down a little bit, okay? I know just how to take some of the weight off. It takes me to your door Cause I know something's wrong How you doing there, cowboy? Hey, you just keep your distance there, Bart. Now, don't be afraid, come on. I'm sorry what happened to you. I got carried away a little. Yeah, you ought to be carried away. As far as they can take you. Hey, let's not bear grudges here. I brought you some first-class moonshine as a piece of Moonshine? Right. You mean genuine white liquor? That's right, Sonny. This will give you ten times more the jolt than my machine. I know what moonshine will do. I just haven't had the good stuff since I was knee-high to a pup. See? Now, am I such a bad guy? And I've helped you out of some sticky situations, haven't I? Yeah, true. You've done that. So let's be friends. Well, I guess I can overlook a few shocks. Here's overlooking at you, kid. We just came from Denver. We'll be in Boston late tonight. <laughs> yeah! Yeah. That's good stuff. You bet your ass it is. <sighs> Well, a man ought to be friends with the man he drinks with. Especially when he's buying the drinks. It's very good philosophy. Very good. I like that. I like that. Let me ask you something. Are you and Gina finished or what? How do you want to know? Plus, I uh, don't believe in stepping on another man's toes. You mean you're interested in Gina? A man would have to be a fool not to be with him. Well, I don't know. Maybe he'd be smart. She's a sly one. You got to watch her every minute. <laughs> See, that doesn't bother me. I haven't met a dame yet that I couldn't keep one step ahead of. And Gina, Gina, she's worth the effort. That's some figure. Yeah, she's a looker, all right. So what is it? She open game or, or what? Oh, I don't know. I haven't really decided yet. But I'll, uh, I'll let you know as soon as I do. But hey, partner, let me know soon, huh? Make sure you remember I'm waiting in line. Happy? Is that all? I thought I'd get something a little better than that. What? 
delirious, at least. Well, I don't know about delirious, maybe, yeah. Well, maybe this will give me a few mm -hmm. extra points. What is this? It's an envelope. No kidding. What, airline tickets? It's a good guess. What? Scott to Aspen? That's right, Doctor, to Aspen and call me in the morning. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. I can't believe we're actually going to go skiing. Yeah, we are. I worked my schedule around, and I thought it would be fun for us to get away from everything and, uh, for a week or so. You know, spend some time on the slopes, do a little hot dogging, a few torchlight slaloms. I don't know how to slalom. Well, I thought I'd let you teach me. <laughs> Thanks, Scott. Oh, yeah. this is such a great gift. You know, I'm a little surprised. I didn't know, like yesterday, you didn't think you were going to be able to get work off. And oh. Well, I got to thinking about my priorities, so. I'm glad. This is going to be your best Christmas ever. I promise. Yes, huh? Who is it? Hi. Hi. Can we come in? Of course. Thanks. Please come in. Hi, Hi, Hello, beautiful. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Julia, I hope Mason has impressed upon you that uh, somehow this part of the Capo family now doesn't right to exclude us from her life or her from ours. He hasn't impressed anything on me, Cece. I haven't spoken to him at all, and I don't intend to. I don't think that there's anything that he'd have to say that I would be remotely interested in. You haven't talked to him at all today? No, I haven't. Why? Boy, we expected him to come over and uh, talk to you about the baptism. Well, he hasn't, and I see obviously you've heard about it. Yes, we have. And we can't believe we have been included. Surely you aren't so bitter that you would use her as a pawn against us to get even? I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean to hurt your feelings by not inviting you. I just was trying to make this something private and something that I could share with Samantha myself. Well, Julie, I understand it's really not our feelings that are hurt. We just don't think Samantha should be deprived of having her family around her when she has her baptism. I mean, if you're angry with us for some reason, don't take it out on this little girl. I want you to reconsider. Please, let us be there. Yes. All right, I'd uh, like it very much if you come. I hope that includes Mason. I didn't say that. Julia, please. This child, he cares a lot more about it than you think he does. He really should be with her tonight. <laughs> man's got to do what a man's got to do. What'd you do with the moonshine, old son? It's all gone. It's all gone. Yeah. Well, you should have said something. I got no use for a man who can't hold my liquor. <laughs> oh. Mm. I'm all right. Hang on, here we go. <laughs> when the moonshine comes over the mountain. So listen, why don't you just rest here for a second, okay? Yeah, I'll be right back. Right back where? Where the hell are we anyway? Where are we? We're at the gates of paradise, my man. Uh, hey, Lewis. Gina. You called? Where's Mason? It didn't work, did it? You couldn't talk him into coming back here with you, could you? I wake up each morning. Just wanted to make sure. Whew, you were ready for him, that's all. I'm all set. I've got a six pack on ice, and then I've got some pork rinds instead of pate, and some nice music picked out. You sure you want to do this? Do what? Well, what are you talking about? I don't know. I hate to see you throw yourself away on ragtime cowboy Joe out there. Yeah, well, I haven't got much choice now, do I? You know how important this is. Now go and get him. Thanks. I thought you borrowed it sometime, but I don't think it fit you. Would you go and get it, please? Hi, Sonny. Hi, Andy Bunch. Uh, you got him a little too relaxed. Just sit right there. Make yourself comfortable. I've got quite an evening planned for you. You're a sight for sore eyes. Come here and sit on old Sonny's lap. Oh. Well, I'm glad to see that all's forgiven. Oh, you know I can't stay mad at you, darling. These are the things that money can't buy. I won't drink the drink. 
drop tomorrow. You have fascinating eyes. So do you. Wonderful shoulders. So do you. Love your muscles. <laughs> well, you got me there. I'd like to have you there. Would you? You really shouldn't be thinking like this. And why not? Well, I actually have to be in church in a few minutes, and I really mustn't take impure thoughts into the house of God. Why don't you bring them over to my house, then, because I welcome them there. Well, I, I, I think they need exercising more than just entertaining. Well, that's fine, because I'm a great believer in exercise. All kinds. Especially the kind that works out impure thoughts. <sighs> I'll keep that in mind. Of course, there's a lot about you that I keep in mind. Same here. You have strong forearms, wonderful biceps. I've always thought that good biceps show character. Uh, and, and, and you're quick. I like a man who's quick, up to a point. Well, I am quick, up to a point. And then again, I'm slower counts. <laughs> Who could ask for anything more? Well, you certainly are in good shape, at least from what I can see from here. I, uh, I believe men and women should stay real fit. I hate to see people let their bodies go to pot. Triple scotch, buddy. Yeah, triple, trying to forget the loss of a loved one. Corral. Yeah. Oh, hang on a second, Bert. Let me see. Who's you looking for? This is John who calls for one of the working girls that hangs out here. Works over at uh, Capital Enterprises. He likes to screw around on the job. You know what I mean. <laughs> hang on. Hi. What are you doing here? Oh. Come in. After you left, I began to feel certain conflicts about me performing Samantha's baptism. Oh, what kind of conflicts? I don't understand. You're not going to back out, are you? No, of course not. I just want us both to be very clear about why this is so important to me. I think we need an understanding of where we stand with each other. My officiating at your daughter's baptism really defines where our commitments are. Mine is to the church, and yours is to building a happy future for you and Samantha. And I know that that future's gonna happen, even if things are a little dark at the moment. Thank you. And I do agree with you. This way, we can always stay a part of each other's lives as friends. Yeah. You know, it's appropriate, really, is because <laughs> it's where our friendship began in the church, and that's where it belongs. Wait, oh, wait, will you stop it? Good grief! Do you have to pull me like that? Can we have some semblance of a conversation first? Those teeth, woman. What is there to talk about? I mean, you're a woman, I'm a man, why don't we just enjoy it? <laughs> oh, all right. Well, what do you want to talk about? The weather? Christmas? Yeah, Christmas. I think we could talk about Christmas. Um, well, well, what are we going to buy each other? Well, I don't know. But I, I think I got a pretty good idea of what you want. I just don't think there's much chance of you getting it, even though you're real good at trying. What are you talking about? What do you think I want? Oh, come on, Gina. I know what you and Bunny have been up to tonight. What do you mean? Bunny and I aren't up to anything. He's just a boarder, that's all. Yeah, well, uh, whatever he is, there's no way he's gonna get me drunk enough to tell you where those files are. You sure have been giving me some nice incentives, though. Well, if you'll excuse me, I have a baptism to attend. A baptism? What are you talking about? Yeah, Julia's having little Samantha baptized tonight, didn't I tell you? No, you didn't tell me. Yeah, well, she is. You're not actually going to go, are you? Well, I wouldn't miss it for the world. Oh, since when do you give a hoot in hell about Samantha? 
Now, hang on there, Gina. She's a fine little girl. Besides, it's not really me, it's my father. And Mason? There's no way old Mason missed his daughter's baptism, even if he wasn't invited. You mean she didn't even invite you? Hmm? Neither one of us. Don't worry, I think I can crash a baptism. I don't believe you. What, you a little surprised, are you? Well, you taught me the game, Gina. Looks like I know the rules better than you do. That's what happens, girl. Well, it's been a fun evening. You tell old Bunny I said, uh, nice try. Oh, oh that's terrific. That's just wonderful. I'm never gonna get my hands on those medical files now. Here we go, honey. My. This is nice, isn't it? Whose office is this? Mason Capwell's. I don't usually like to do it in the top exec office. I mean, I could use a, a freight elevator, but uh, you said uh, you like to be comfortable. Yes, it always turns me on. Be surrounded by signs of wealth and power. Well, you are now. So, let's get down to it, huh? You are impetuous, aren't you? <laughs> what are you talking about? Impetuous. I mean, this ain't a date. I mean, I got a, I got a job to do here. I mean, I can't be spending all night messing around. But don't we get to know each other's names first? Oh. My name is Bert. What else you got to know, huh? Here. Here. You should uh, put on what's in here. All right, fine. But what do I change? Uh, you, you, you stay right here. I'll use the other room. Thank you. And Bert. You're quite a gentleman. sick man, you should seek professional help. Unbelievable. Oh, that's my girl. She is so beautiful. <laughs> I hope you realize what an important night this is in your life. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You're about to be welcomed into God's family. What do you see? What? What do you see, the candles? I have some business to attend to in back. I'll be back in a moment. So this is where the blessed event is taking place, huh? That's right. Just us, is it? No, actually, I'm expecting your father and Sophia. Oh, good. You, uh, you talked to them then? Yes, they came by to see me. Actually, I thought they were pleading your case for you in order to be here at the baptism. Well, maybe I should have done my own pleading, but actually I was dealing with not being invited in the first place. And I didn't really think I should have to beg for admission. That was a rather painful prospect. You've given me a great insight into pain, Mason. We've all suffered a lot at your hands. You're the one that created the scene at the wedding. Right. Be that as it may, I think Sophia is right, and I think that we have to make an effort to rise above the way that we feel about each other for Samantha's sake. Well, I'm glad you feel that way. And it won't be difficult for me. I think you know how much Samantha means to me. 
I want to stay in contact with her. I want her to know that I'm her father. No matter what's happened between us, I don't want it to come between Samantha and me. I'm glad you feel that strongly about her. Did you ever doubt it? Things went on my end. Okay, go ahead, you first. Well, things didn't go so good with Mason. I mean, Sonny. Yes, Sonny. He's gone. Gone? What happened? I failed. Look, I know how hard you work to set things up, but I, I bombed out. I guess I'm just not the temptress I thought I was. Hey, don't be so hard on yourself. I am just as glad. I don't know what you mean. Uh, look, next time, I'll do real good, I promise. We'll just come up with another plan, that's all. And, and even though this time it was a disaster, next time it won't be, I promise. Terrific. What are you so happy about? I failed. I was a bomb. The evening was a disaster. Does it matter? I have got news guaranteed to lift your spirits. You do? What? After I left you, I just didn't go up to one of my rooms and take a bubble bath, you know. I went out and started work on my own. So? So. I found out where Sonny stashes the files. You did? Yes. It was at a great personal cost to myself, but I think I'm right. That's great! <laughs> I think we're ready to begin now. You can all hear me? We are gathered here to consecrate this beautiful girl to her creator, her father in heaven. Samantha Eden Wainwright, we pray that you will walk all your days in the light of God, be nurtured by his love and by the love of your family gathered here tonight. Heather Donnelly and Scott Clark, you've agreed to serve as Samantha's godparents. It's a solemn responsibility. Now, should you be asked to care for her, you will be in charge of teaching her about the love of God, precepts of the church, and the importance of learning to love one another. Do you swear to fulfill those duties? <clears throat> I swear. Yes, I swear. If you will approach the font with Samantha. I baptize thee, Samantha Eden Wainwright, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. As we all stand here tonight, dedicating this child to God, all of us are equally children of God, never beyond his care or his forgiveness. As Mason and Julia love this beautiful little girl, so God loves each of us. And now is a symbol that Samantha will now walk in the light of Christ. I give her father this candle. Yasser Arafat's address to the U.N. mean a dramatic change in the PLO's relationship with the U.S. and Israel. Tom Brokaw reports from Geneva, Switzerland, tonight on NBC Nightly News.